the meeting to order, whatever time it is, a little after six, one minute after six. Uh, the legal voters in the town of Granville are hereby warned and notified to meet the Granville Town Hall Tuesday, March 5th, 2024, 6 p.m. to transact the following business. Uh, so I'm looking now for a motion to move Article 1 to the floor. So moved. Second. 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 Can you hear me okay, Luke? Uh, Article 1, to elect all town officers as required by law. A, to elect a moderator for a one-year term ending in 2025. I nominate Kelly Efroff. I second it. We have a nomination of Kelly. Raise your hand. She's right here. Anybody might want to know who she is? Second. <laughs> Anybody else? Want to throw their hat in the ring? I move the nomination cease. I second it. If there's no objection, we'll close nominations. All, all in favor of Kelly as the moderator say aye. 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 Opposed? Not me. Thank you so much. <laughs> This does need to be done by a paper ballot. We're prepared, prepared with a paper ballot. Do we um, have anybody open, opening the nomination? Yeah, I'd like to nominate Mike Aramo. Mike Aramo, okay. Nominate yeah. Robin Seconds, okay. Any other nominations? Nomination cease. Nominations. I move not to close nominations. Second. All right. So we don't uh, need a paper ballot. So we're I, I, I move that, that Cheryl writes one paper ballot. We can't do that for this. We have to actually get No, you, it's, it's unopposed. You don't have to do yeah. it. If it's unopposed, there's only one person running. We don't have to do right. it. Okay, well, we, we have to do a vo voice. We have voice. A voice vote. And then we can file one paper ballot for Cheryl. All those in favor of the nomination? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I had a bite. All right. Uh, <laughs> congratulations, Mike Aramo. Select person. Uh, to elect a second auditor for a three year term ending 2027. Uh, any, anybody move? Who, who, is that, who is that person? Robin is at the end of her term. So it Does she new want term. to continue? <laughs> is there, are there any nominations? <laughs> uh, I'll nominate Robin. Nominate Robin? I second that. So we have a nomination and a second for Robin. Any opposed? All right. I, I, I do know that Robin would welcome if someone else wanted to do it. I'm just saying that on her behalf. Although I think she's terrific. I don't know what else does. Give me the audience. Awesome. Who, who seconded that? I did. Okay, Gina. Sorry. Okay, you. any other nominations on the floor? I move non nomination cease. Okay, any second? I'll second it. Okay. So Robin has been elected. Oh, we have to, it's paper ballot. Um, all those in favor of Robin? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, <coughs> Robin Hagerman. <laughs> For your turn. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, 
The next point of business um, is D, to elect a first constable for a two-year term ending 2026. Any nominations for constable? I nominate Mark Belisle. Mark Belisle. I second. Seconded by Roger. Any opposed? Any, <laughs> <laughs> Any further nominations? I think that's the thing. Any further nominations? It's harder than it looks. I move the nominations, cease. All right. Um, uh, let's open it to the floor vote. Uh, all those in favor of Mark Fly? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? <laughs> all right. Mark Fly. Um, uh, the next point of business is E, to elect a second constable, constable for a one-year term ending 2025. Mm -hmm. um, any nominations? Mm -hmm. Or uh, anybody want to move that? Well, I would nominate the present Jeff Lumbra. Lumbra? Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Lumbra. Lumbra. Yeah. Is, Lumbra. Has he done an admirable job? I, I think he does. He's kind of the watchdog for over in his little neighborhood over there. And yeah. <laughs> the only people Where around. Where his family has lived for generations. Right. Just, just for reference, the second constable of, over that we're elected doesn't have any law enforcement authority. He's just one of the point of contact for us, and he's yeah. a great contact, I believe. So he does a good job as far as I'm concerned. You can tell he's not here. I would elect him. Okay. <laughs> I, I move nominations, please. Second. Do we have a second? Um, okay, um, all of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Jeff Lumbra um, is elected as the second constable. Uh, point F, to, to elect a delinquent tax collector for a one-year term ending 2025. Nancy Needham? Any other nominations from the floor? I move the nominations cease. Second. All right. Um, uh, from a floor vote, all those in favor of Nancy Needham? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. Nancy Needham is elected. Link of tax collector for the next year. Uh, point G, to elect a second cemetery commissioner for a three-year term ending 2027. That's my term, I believe. But your name. I think it's me. Do you want to you? Do we to open nominations? Well, I nominate there. Mark if he wants to. Okay. I second that. Nominations for Mark Lyle and second. Uh, any other nominations from the board? Any motions to cease nomination? So moved. Second. All right. Uh, floor vote. All those in favor of Mark Lyle as the um, second cemetery commissioner for a three year term ending 2027. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, congratulations, Michael. All right. Okay, uh, quick point of business. I just wanted to, as we opened up the meeting, we went directly to the um, uh, elections of town offices, but I do want to just kind of put some points of order um, into the meeting. So um, first off, again, to assure you all know me, I'm taking over for Roger, my name is Kelly. Um, I'm pleased to be the new moderator for the town. Um, according to state law, we are governed by Robert's rules within our meetings, but there are a few things within Vermont state law that also um, are important to our meetings. First of all, only warned articles will be addressed during the meeting. Um, once an article has been decided, whether it's voted up or down, um, it cannot be reconsidered after the assembly has taken up uh, work on another article. Um, and also, while Robert's rules require a majority vote with a paper val ballot as we go through, um, it does request for people to request a paper ballot if that is so needed. So if that is a concern, raise the concern, and I'd be happy to work with that. Um, can I see by show of hands anybody in the room who is not a registered voter um, in the town of Granville? All right, anybody who's not a registered voter, just please understand, uh, we cannot have you vote on any uh, of the articles that we're assessing or we're addressing tonight. Um, and, we are going to move. Do you want to um, allow the state reps to send first to talk? Sure. Um, if we have anybody here, do we have any uh, non-voters, anybody who's representing the state that might want to address before we start? I was just about to bring you a note. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Senator Ruth Hardy. I'd love to give an updated people like that. Okay, sure. Great. <laughs> Great. 
It's like, you know, like in the theater. I love it. Um, I, I don't know where to stand. You can stand right here. Right here. Yeah, that's yeah. right yeah. 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 fine. That's good. Stand in front of us. Yeah, you're the one talking. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Ms. Moderator. And um, I'm Senator Ruth Hardy. I'm one of the two state senators that represent <laughs> you here in the Addison District. Um, and I am uh, trying to attend the town meetings in this corner of my district. I was at Hancock this morning, um, Rochester last night. Um, so um, here I am in Granville. And um, thank you for allowing me to speak and for having me at your meeting. Um, I wanted to give you a little update on what we're doing in the legislature, and I'm happy to answer questions if there's time, or I can just hang out in the back if people want to chat in the, in the hallway. Um, but uh, at the beginning of the session, we had three big priorities that we wanted to try to address. Um, housing, um, and continuing to put um, funding into housing, and also do regulatory reform to allow for more housing to be built, especially in town centers. Um, and uh, there are several committees that are working on housing. I am not any, on any of the housing committees, but um, there are still several committees working on housing, and I can give you a little bit of information on that if you want. Um, also, public safety. Um, and public safety can be defined in various ways depending on where you live. Um, public safety here in Granville is probably very different than public safety conversations in Burlington. Um, but the, uh, our judiciary committees are working on a variety of um, sort of criminal justice reform issues and um, uh, public safety, um, more broadly speaking, um, issues. And then the third one is uh, uh, recovery and res resilience in the face of flooding. Um, and that is obviously a lot of towns um, were really impacted last year in July in particular, but also in August and in December with flooding around the state. Um, so those were the, our three uh, priorities at the beginning of the session. And then, fortunately, um, school funding issues have kind of reared their ugly head and that has sort of taken some of our time as well. Um, but in the Senate, we serve on two committees and I serve on the Health and Welfare Committee um, that's been doing um, a variety of bills and one of the things that we're going to be turning our attention to right now is the opioid epidemic um, and trying to figure out more ways to really address that head on. Um, I also chair the uh, Government Operations Committee and, and, and that's the committee that I wanted to give you a little bit of more information on. We, ha we have um, been doing a bill called uh, about the government response to flooding and natural disasters. Um, and a lot of what's in the bill is really how can government be more effective at preventing and responding um, and recovering from flooding or other natural disasters. And it includes things like um, making sure that our first responders are well prepared, well trained. I see we have at least one first responder, probably several in the room. I saw an ambulance on my way here. Um, pardon me? Two of them left. Two of them left because of the amp, yeah. Um, and um, included in first responders in our bill are um, public works employees because during flooding, a lot of times the water system employees are the first people on the scene. I'm wanting to make sure that they are in the loop and they're included in the planning and in the training um, and also in the benefits that first responders get should there be um, an unfortunate tragedy or a death um, relating to um, a first responder during a natural disaster. Um, we also in, um, in, include provisions to improve and expand our first alert and um, 911 system to make sure that everybody is in that system and that it also translates for people who are deaf or hard of hearing or don't have English as their first language. So making sure our, our you know, trans, our, our, our response systems are, are working better. Um, evacuation routes, um, shelters, a lot of different things that uh, we had to unfortunately employ last year. There's also a grant program for municipalities to apply to for to improve their infrastructure um, to prevent future flooding. Um, so there are a number of things in that bill really related to our government response. The other thing that our committee is focused on is updating our um, open meeting law. Um, so as you know, all public bodies um, 
your select board and others have to follow open meeting law to make sure that you all have <coughs> access to those meetings to participate and to watch what your, your elected officials are doing. Um, during the pandemic, we allowed um, those bodies to meet fully remotely, and that expires at the end of June. So we're trying to update that to provide a little bit more flexibility for some of those boards to continue to meet remotely, but for the main boards, including select boards, to still have to meet in person um, so that people have a place to go to watch those meetings. And even if some of them are, rem uh, some of the people are participating remotely, there's still an in-person location. <coughs> Um, that came after a lot of testimony we heard from select boards and school boards and people from all over the state about it um, and really came to a compromise that we think everybody can live with. There are a lot of towns, including possibly Granville, that doesn't have very good uh, internet. So having all the meetings remotely was really hard for people. Um, we have great the internet, but um, there was some talk about it requiring us to have a remote access. That is not it's the, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Would, that would be horrible for all our public yes. bodies to. We heard that from a lot of people. I can tell you, okay. the Vermont League of Cities and okay. Towns did their job well. We heard from a lot of towns. We got testimony actually from your neighbors um, in Hancock and Rochester about that as well. I said um, so too, yeah. There was a moment where we were considering requiring hybrid, but we backed off on that. But you still have to have an in-person location. Well, we do, and, and if somebody wants to call in or somebody, yep. you know, with the snowstorm, and <coughs> we certainly allow that, but we do not have remote access for all our meetings. Right, exactly, and you won't have to. Okay. Unless somebody requests wanting to call in, you, you have to accommodate right, them to do that. Yeah. So. That's basically, it sounds like you're doing okay. what we are going to ask you to do. <laughs> if we needed a great big Zoom in the, the whole nine yards, and you don't need that. every public meeting would have to go by mm -hmm. that, that would be a burden. Yes, <laughs> we heard that loud and clear, okay. so we got, we got you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so those are two of the big bills that we worked on. And then in, I just wanted to touch on school funding, because I'm sure you've all heard, or many of you have heard about the possibility of large tax increases. You guys are in sort of a different position because, first of all, your vote, I believe, is in May. Um, you're with Hancock and Granville are in a school district together, right? So there's a little bit more time for your school district to prepare. And second, because you're a tuition-only district, um, you don't have a lot of flexibility. You sort of have to pay whatever the tuition is, unfortunately. But what we, we passed a bill a couple weeks ago that, would, that removes uh, an unintended consequence of a bill that we passed a few years ago that was making school districts sort of add more to their budgets and raising it up a little bit more. Um, we've, we've told them they need to back down, and a, a lot of school districts have. Um, so that has decreased the tax, the potential tax increase. Um, somewhat and that we're going to continue to work on it. So hopefully by the time you all vote on your budget, I'll have more good news for you. Um, uh, but we know it's a huge issue. We know that it's something that we have to continue working on. It's sort of a perfect storm with um, inflation and the cost of health insurance and the federal funding drying up for schools, but the needs oh still being there. Mm -hmm. um, and the property value situation and the common level of appraisal being kind of off kilter because of the pandemic. So just wanted you to know we're continuing to work on it. And what we did a couple weeks ago did help re uh, lower the potential tax increase. Um, that's what I got for now. I, if, if you want, I can answer questions, or I can just hang out in the back for a few minutes in case anyone wants to come and talk to me. Sure, give, uh, give a couple minutes if anybody has any questions. If not, thank you, Ms. Hardy. For You're welcome. Thank you all, and I hope you have a great meeting. Thanks, everyone, and um, you, I, please reach out to me if you have questions. Thank you. 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 tonight. Um, we usually get a rep that comes from over in Randolph, but uh, 
it's great to have a center. I don't know if last time we had a yeah. Madison County Center. It's great. Oh, yeah. Never Thank you. Well, it's my pleasure. It was really an honor to be here. Thank you so much. And, and I'm going to take a picture because you look so good up there. <laughs> <laughs> I will, we don't allow that. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Happy town. Uh, and I want to thank Rachel for three years being on the select board, and certainly Roger for his 200 years. Of <laughs> We're still one of the smaller towns in the state with under 300 people. Um, we rely on all contractors to do everything. You know, our only paid people are our, our town clerk and treasurer. And, um, you know, we, we have no real paid um, kind of staffing, um, uh, all our road stuff, and we'll get into that just a little bit. But uh, I, I really want to thank the contractors that are local that help us out with all the, all the work that we do, that we have to do. Two Rivers out of Regional Commission is the local regional planning commission, and they help us both on municipal and road, road work with grants and, and uh, getting our requests for proposals out contracts and all, so that they're very helpful. Um, this, this building, um, I think, is finally pretty well um, stabilized for, the, for quite a while. We did the steeple a couple of years ago, and uh, that should last us another 40 or 50 years with some painting that will be required. Uh, this summer, we had all both the, the, the um, upstairs and, and downstairs windows have all been redone. Uh, we had a grant from Historic Preservation. Uh, they've got storms on them all now, and uh, I think we're finally airtight, and, and, and uh, the, the envelope of this building should last for a while. We, we are bound by being on the National Historic Register, and uh, so that, that's quite a few complications and requirements um, when we do this stuff. We're in the midst of getting grants uh, for handicap accessibility. This uh, building does not conform to handicap accessibility requirements. Uh, the front door and the stoop uh, needs to be redone. If we ever want to use upstairs, um, it needs to have some kind of uh, accessibility, either through an elevator or chair rail or something. And we're doing a complete um, uh, overview of, of what really needs to be done for handicap accessibility. Hopefully, we'll get most of that paid for with grants. Um, the uh, town clerk and treasurer got new computers this, this year, and uh, you know that was paid through ARPA funds, which are the um, pandemic relief money that was given to um, the state and the towns. And we'll get a little bit more on, on, on how we're spending some of that money in, in just a few, too. Um, the fire department needs. Uh, the building down there, um, we're looking at uh, trying to find some grant money to put um, water and sewer in there. It's uh, uh, tough to have a, a public building without a bathroom. And uh, so that's, that's ongoing. And again, we're looking for grants to, to help us with that and stay tuned for that. Um, we're really lucky to have um, two meeting places that people can access uh, this building right here for parties or weddings or whatever. Um, it, it's open for uh, residents to, to rent it and also the corner school, which uh, has been renovated and has Wi-Fi and uh, events that uh, you know can be held there. So um, um, that's a, a, another great place to hold events. Um, the select board report is on page 15. We can always use volunteers. We need so many more people. Out of our 300 people in town, you know, it's tough to find people to fill positions and, and help us out. Um, we've got 16 miles of, of Class 3 dirt roads, and they're pretty muddy right now. I am hopeful that this being our third mud season, it's only the beginning of March, that uh, maybe we're beyond the worst. Uh, I think the frost is getting out of the, out of the road. There's a nice hole that just opened up on Maston Hill. So be careful, you'll see cones there, and we'll get that attended to tomorrow, I hope. Um, but when we had uh, major problems in, um, in December with, with mud, you know, and try to do as best we can trying to get, uh, trying to get uh, um, repairs and stone and whatever whatever's needed, I want to give a big um, shout out um, uh, that we have uh, um, uh, uh, people 
plowing our roads um, th this winter. Done a great job, and uh, you know, I, 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 we're, we go, we're in a three-year contract. Uh, the price obviously did go up, but we're in a three-year fixed contract on that, and I think that's going to be Shane Elbow's done a great job, and uh, you know, uh, hope you know. Unfortunately, we didn't get a whole lot of snow, or fortunately, we didn't get we, we didn't get a lot of snow. I don't know whichever side you're on with that, but. Uh, um, I don't think we're over with that yet anyway, being the first week in March. We follow the town's procurement policy. We go out to bid um, with most, a lot of the work we do is with state grants um, that we get and uh, accounting is, is, is paramount to make sure that we um, have, it, have all the I's dotted and T's crossed. We have a um, no match um, uh, grant from FEMA and the state to take out dangerous trees, they call them. They're, they're on the side of the road. You'll see some orange blazing on these trees. We were hoping to get that done before winter, but these are trees that are right in the road, either block them right away or a, a, a sight distance, or they're actually right in the road. And uh, so hopefully we'll get those taken out this spring. Um, you know, we do general maintenance all the time, grading the roads. Uh, uh, usually, you know, it used to be like twice a year. Now it seems three or four times we've got to go out and, and grade it. Um, uh, the gravel pit here in town, um, we're still hoping to get gravel out of that pit, but um, we've had to truck gravel over from uh, Middlebury, and uh, that adds time and expense to, uh, to doing all of that. Um, the Hanley Road, which is over in East Granville, which is part of us, I don't think anybody from East Granville is here tonight, but uh, um, all 20 or so people that live over there, uh, that's in a floodplain. Uh, they get flooded bad. Uh, we've, we've met with the river guy over there and trying to come up with, a, again, trying to get grants to uh, help reduce the flooding that's there. Hanley Road's about a half a mile, not even a half a mile long, but it comes right up across the railroad tracks under Route 12A, and it's a pretty dangerous spot, so that, that road has to be maintained also. Um, the, uh, we, we still struggle sometimes with some of our visitors and Airbnbs and just people coming from down south that don't have cars that are good for our back roads, even in the best of times, but uh, not much we can do about that. Um, the class four roads, uh, we, uh, our roads go up into the National Forest. I uh, want a big thank you to Vast that built two bridges last summer, so that now Kennedy Road you can go all the way up to the uh, government road and it's all connected, whereas uh, until they put those couple of bridges in, you couldn't get through. So, um, and the town goes all the way up to the government road. Um, if you ever have any questions on, on the roads, or you, you know, we'd love to have people go out and help clean out their ditches in front of the yards and keep the culverts flowing. And uh, it's always a, um, a challenge, you know, for us to, to do that because, like I said, we, you know, it's pretty much all contractors. And the other, only other thing I want to leave with is that uh, we are going to, we're going out to uh, contract and we're going to pave, repave um, our paved roads, and we're going to add 100 feet onto the bottom of Puddle Duck North Hollow where it comes out of Route 100. So that that should improve it uh, greatly. We're going to be um, paying for that using some ARPA money and. Uh, some uh, uh, capital road pro project money that's been carried over over the years, so uh, we should be in good shape for that. Richard. Yeah, amongst all this uh, turmoil we're having with the roads, I'd like to report a tremendous success. Uh, last year, you had you and Kenny did a small section of road in front of Judy Wood's house on North Hollow Road. I don't know, 50, 7,500 yards. Uh, that was one of the worst spots on that road. I know because I personally graded it myself for three years in order to get out. And that was the only way it would be terrible for us. So you picked a really bad spot. Um, that is perfect. There's not a single pothole, rut, or anything in that section. Um, so you've demonstrated something that really works. I don't think I have to say much more. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> can, can, can you explain this? Or we're not at this 
point yet. Right? We're not quite at that point yet, but sure. But, but um, I actually just want to also <coughs> say that I wanted to uh, commend uh, Rachel Gregorian for her service as a select board member. Yeah. 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 I'll be back with my kids later on. Yeah. Yeah, well. Are there any other points of discussion <laughs> related yeah. to the select board yeah. report? Right. Um, we would have, um, before, our, okay, move on to Article 3 at this point. Um, I'd like to um, move Article 3 to the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Second the motion. All right, Article 3 on the floor. Um, and Article 3 is from the Town of Randall vote to accept the budget of $405,886 to meet expenses and liabilities of the town and authorize the select board to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same. And with that, uh, discussion? Now yeah. I'll ask, what is this? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Um, to answer what that is, I'm going to take off my moderator hat for a moment and put on my uh, uh, auditor hat. Uh, on your chairs, you will see a report, which is an amended report uh, to reflect the actual year-end P&L statement for the town. Uh, there was an error in our system with a new report that was uh, printed and uh, published in our um, town report for the year. So pages 21 to 23 in the town report, um, this is to amend that report uh, to have the correct information. There were some uh, trial adjusted entries that were made that affected the report that was in here. And um, just to be completely honest, it was just an error. Um, the actual report is reflected on what's here, and this is what should be in here. Um, from the auditor perspective, um, myself, Robin, and Roger uh, audited the books this past year for 22 or for 23-24 for 22-23 um, and fiscal year ending 22-23 we did not find anything significantly uh, different from this report and the adjustments that anything looks different between the report that's on your chair um, and that we've updated online as well um, and what's in the town report um, was reflected in the actual monthly statements so um, honestly this is just a correction yes I'm building a rally in the East Granville residence. So the first one is I'm looking at your that one new audited PL. It looks like the yes. only major real difference is the fact that there's an out office outside audit that wasn't budgeted for. How often do you normally budget for audits? We we had a we had that budget just for that uh, year. So that was the first year that we'd had an outside audit in many years. And it's something we will probably do on a routine basis. We don't have it scheduled. We decided to do a formal audit when our longtime uh, treasurer, um, Kathy Werner, retired and we had a new treasurer come in mid-year. So that's why we paid that money to have the full audit done. I mean, I'm, I'm all for audits. I was just wondering why it wasn't budgeted. Because it made a quite a difference. And it's, I, it, it's it's not, to my relation, not budget for the next No, we, 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 we're going to go with that crap pot. Uh, local auditors that have done a great job. All right, moderator has back on. The, 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 I had another one on the, and I hope this doesn't cause a big problem, but the, uh, the right page, yeah, here we go. Uh, page 18. I don't think the math is right. What page? The total should be $406.00, all $520.00, which comes from line, page 16, line 50-80, for website range. Page 16? 16, mm -hmm. line 50-80, the total for the fiscal year was this coming fiscal year could be 160, not 150. Oh, yeah. 
And then on line 90. Oh, yeah, I see that. Nine, let's see. Yeah, 90, 20. The cemetery, Boeing. Looks like maintenance. 3,500 and 1360, not 4750. That's 110 dollars. Those are the only two I saw. I think we found our next dollar. Yes. I did look at BYCC. Um, and I was the other, I guess I was curious about the buildings and grounds. The, the only thing that had really sizable increases are the cemetery mowing and the buildings and grounds mowing. They're up like 40%. We had, yeah, we had I'm, there, I'm sure there's a story, I just don't know it. We had we had to go out to bid again and that's what it came in at. But we are into that budget right now, so um, I wasn't going to go through it line by line, but uh, thank you for pointing that out. I, I'm a little embarrassed that we have uh, some uh, spreadsheet errors in there, but uh, um, at least it's not huge. But um, so if you if you look through, if you go ahead, Roger. Well, I, I'm just concerned that he pointed out some small errors. How would we go through in the proposed budget and check if there are larger errors? Um, well, he's on the proposed budget, yeah. We're on the proposed budget, yeah. Right. But I'm saying for this coming year's budget that will begin, uh, you know, July 1st. But I think it, it, it's, it's important to remember, everybody, that um, a budget is the best guess of what we're going to spend on each line item. They are not etched in granite, as some people might think. And at the end of the year, some things will be over and some things will be under. If it's a municipal, if it's a municipal item, then it goes back to the tax base if it's over. And if, if, uh, if it uh, um, is under, then it gets carried forward to the next year. The roads get dedicated, as we vote every year, to put into a capital fund. So that whatever is either plus or minus on the roads ends up in the road capital account. Um, and these are all done through Excel, and I'm surprised that yeah. we've got uh, some, some errors. I, I've looked these over pretty closely. I didn't catch it. But, um, I, think, I, I think what we, we can make that a, the, the, those couple of adjustments right now and have a different bottom line vote, or we can leave the bottom line vote as, as it was warned. Um, I'm not sure what we should do at that point. Um, I think if, if, if we make an adjustment to what wasn't worn, we were limited on about the percentage off that we could be, so it would have to be de minimis, otherwise we can only address the one article. Well, the question I have is, is there in the final column of proposed, or is it in the um, add subtract column? Yeah. So the error is just that 144 versus you know, which way is the math wrong? It's, it's going across into the um, uh, proposed budget. Right. So we're right now off by less than $200. Yeah, it's less than $200. $120. Right. Is, it, is, it in our, is it in the favor of a lower? It's more expensive. It's more. But it, I, I agree. Budgets right. are just a guidance. Right. Not, this is not a major thing. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming to the scramble. <laughs> and you're going to be voted on next time. <laughs> we need help. Christy Fuller. Oh. Christy Fuller. Yes. Yes. Um, I was just wondering, it pertains to this because of um, it's a line item. The um, in our appropriations, the corner school has asked for a thousand dollars in the regular budget, but then Article Seven is asking us to um, vote on whether they're going to become a tax-free building in town, which is around five to six hundred bucks, depending on how many, much more improvement happens to it as to what it can be taxed on. So that would be that we would be um, giving fifteen to sixteen hundred in. 
just making that aware of when that vote comes that it's already been given money in this vote. Yeah, can I address that question? Sure. Um, so first of all, we've always been uh, tax free. And in fact, um, we are 501c3. We don't actually have to come to the town and even ask for it. So that's, that has always been true. Um, secondly, uh, really glad you brought up. Uh, why are you asking? <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, honestly, I don't know why it keeps coming up every couple of years because it isn't actually necessary. But, um, but the second thing is uh, the reason that we increased it this year, and you can read about it on, on page 47, maybe. Um, the quarter school, yeah, 44. Um, we are finally at a point where we're at, able to offer some real programming. And uh, last year when we talked about this at town meeting, uh, it was it really you know, a question came from the floor if $500 is in fact enough money for what we are trying to do. And we didn't raise it at that point. But this year we came to, we're coming to the town to say, in fact, uh, our operating expenses just for like uh, utilities is about $1,200. Um, the town has been very generous. We really appreciate that people have um, uh, supported the corner school. We've gotten in the last, since 2019, a lot of grant money uh, to improve the facility. Um, I want to point out that there is a handout back there with a, a schedule of programming that we're hoping to run this summer. Um, so we're really trying to make the corner school into a, a, a real community builder. Um, so the extra $500 will be going towards that new programming and also to help offset that $1,200 cost. I, I really don't mind the, the appropriation number at all. I yeah, mean, no, no, I just why we're, you no, know. but I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the, the, the tax thing because it has always been that way. We've been a nonprofit since the beginning. Next, and what is your name? Marilyn. Marilyn? Yeah, um, I didn't go to town meeting last year, but I think last year the Corner School Resource Center um, asking for the $500 was a warning article. Yeah. But this year it's a budget line item. Or we just decided to put it in along with all the other donations that we make as a town. Okay. So we didn't have a separate warning article this year for that. Mm -hmm. Roger? Yeah, I'll just speak on behalf of the Corner School. I'm the president of the board of directors. And we did um, uh, encourage the select board to have it as a regular line item. Uh, and I'm always curious to know, uh, does anybody here object to the mission of the Corner School? No. Or is something we could do differently? Maybe we should invest in a fence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mud splatter down. Yeah, right. Uh, because we're really open for anyone who wants to come by and take a look at what's been done. We've been working on that building for almost 14 years. <laughs> Isn't that and Cheryl was the selectman when we transferred it from the town to the nonprofit. For a dollar? I have a, a, a picture of Cheryl holding the dollar. So, so, like kind of yeah. So I would just say to anyone here who has any kind of idea for how we can go forward or any skeptical opinions, you know, please let us know. Do you plan on being open more often or having more than yeah, please please do take a look at yeah. the handout and yeah. and we are getting to the point where we may be able to be open in the winter, but it's still very expensive to heat that building in the winter. With a heat pump? We have a heat pump. Yeah. We have one heat pump with two heads. Uh, the main room is is um, not well insulated at the moment, but we got a grant from the Council on the Arts to put storm windows in this summer. And then we'll work on replacing the tin to the roof. Once we do that, then we can continue insulating the walls. But, you know, we have to... Most of our, our funds come from uh, the Division of Historic Preservation, or matching grants or the Preservation Trust. So we do plan to be open, you know, May through October this year. And, and maybe if, if it's warmer in there because of the storm windows, we might be able to be open a little while. Yeah. Will it be regular hours or just for when you have the 
presentation and the function. It's a completely volunteer organization, so I suspect for the near future it will be. But you know, but anyway, you have Wi-Fi, so we have free Wi-Fi, and you can access it just by sitting right out in front of the building in your car if you want to. Yeah, well, or, or if you want to be inside the building, you just have to get in touch with any of us from the corner school. We'll, we'll let you in. Yeah. And it's great high-speed internet, and it's there for the benefit of the community. Yeah. Which part of that thousand dollars is going to help offset? Any further discussions? Good job. Um, I mean, my name is Diane. Uh, I had a question about um, Winter Roads. They're, the, Sean Elwell is doing a fantastic job, and I think everyone's really happy with it. But the, the increase from 50000 to 68000 is it's a 36% increase over the current year budget. Is that written into the three-year contract? From it should the stay the same for three years. So there's no escalating clause in it or anything. And we did go out and bid on that, and that was the low bid. And uh, um, you know, it, we, I think we were probably getting a deal at fifty thousand uh, dollars, you know, and we were not getting the quality that we got in this year. So, what for twenty two twenty three? It was fifty thousand. This current, he's, this is his first winter, so it's this year. So before this, it wasn't, you know. So really that's the biggest increase in our budget is $18,000. I'm sorry, on, uh, yeah, $18,000 increase on that winter contract. Six month contract from the first snow to the last snow. To take down all the trees when they come down. Um, you know, he's responsible for the sanding and keeping the snow winged back, which has been better than I've ever seen it before. And I think because the snow now is mostly in the ditches that we'll probably have a little relief from a real bad mud season, but you know, we're right in the midst right now, so it's a little early, but. He's supposed to sweep too, right? And sweeping up the, uh, the, the sand at the end of the season too, is in that. So. Okay, any further discussion in the back? This isn't any discussion. The lowering polls are going to close in 12 minutes. So right, we're right going to call in five minutes to see if anybody still needs it. To oh, okay. Go. Right. So we'll move that. Good. So, any other questions on on the budget? I think we've hit the highlights on the. We try to keep it as close as we can to, to this year's budget. The big we talked about mowing and and the uh, plowing are the two biggest increases. Thank you for letting us do. Serve to both. I got a question on the, uh, let's see, item, the, the sand, I mean the gravel, which one is it, I have to look it up, on the roads, Cup. Page 18. 15, okay, let's see, gravel you have, $50,000 in there? Yep. Item 52020. Yep. I've been asking the question probably for almost two years that the bull mill owes twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 in gravel. And I don't understand why we don't ask for it and or else reduce, get the money and so we can get a tax break on some of this stuff. Well, I mean, well, Go ahead, Ken, you want to talk about that, the gravel? The, we will get the gravel out of that pit. It's, it's the same story. Um, we're, we're going to get the gravel out of that pit. It's, um, it's been taking some time to, uh, they're working on getting their Act 250 permit. Uh, however, we're going to get the gravel out of there whether or not they have the Act 250 permit, and it's coming this spring. Um, we just have to get a little bit bigger pile so that the guy that comes in and crushes it will actually come down and crush it, and then we can take it out. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be illegal to take gravel when you don't have the permit? We had Especially a- Especially with all the flooding that happens throughout the area? 
I don't like it any more than you do. It, but we need to we need to get some closure on that part of it, and it's a. I don't know why it's taking the time to get the permit. It shouldn't take this long. Well, the, I looked on the, the Act 250 site, and there's a lot to do with about well water engineering and all that stuff. Wouldn't it be easier just to get the money from the contract? The the problem, well, I had, I had had the conversation with Jeff about that, and if it doesn't come to fruition, then we will get the money. And if not, well, it's been going on for almost two years. Well, we, you know, there's, there's talk that there could be um, up to half a million yards of gravel still there, and hopefully he'll get his permit together and we'll be able to get our gravel locally. Um, it, it's less expensive locally and certainly a lot less um, environmental impact than having all the trucking going across uh, 125 to Middlebury or in other directions. So uh, we're trying to be patient with them, you know, and uh, like um, Ken just said, we will get that gravel this year, so it'll, it'll be a wash. It, it doubles the cost of it, of a truckload of gravel to go and get it from Middlebury. Or Hey, we could do it for two and a half hours in the truck. Right, the yep. trucking costs and, you know, the diesel, everything else, you know, so we'd like to keep it local if we can. You know, we're not involved in the permitting problem, but uh, hopefully that gets resolved. And uh, But we will get our um, 700 or 800 yards this spring. I know. Steve, you want a uh, turned off our stormwater rain path when we were no longer a manufacturing place. They decided to do that. We did not decide to do that. They decided to do it. And now we have to go through the whole process again to get it back on to get the um, grant to go back because the buildings are still there even though it's not being um, used as a manufacturing place the anymore. Surface. And right. it's not something that we asked for them to do. Right. It's something that they did on their own and now they want us to pay for it all over again to get it back. So you know, he's, working, he's working on that and trying to get it um, to go through the state rigmarole thing, and right. that's why it's happening. And we can get you a check, and you can swim somewhere else. <laughs> we, we did do some work down there to, to help implement that this summer. And it, All right, are there any other questions on our budget? OK, anybody move to? I'd like to move the question. Question. Second. All right. Um, all those in favor of adopting the budget, um, as stated, um, four, four, you should actually say the number. Four, four thousand. Four hundred. Just a point of order. You should reread the article. The whole article. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, and then ask for a vote. Okay. Great. Uh, shall the town of Granville vote to accept the budget of four hundred and five thousand eight hundred and eighty-six dollars to meet expenses and liabilities of the town? and authorize the select board to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same. Um, we'll go to vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, we'll move um, <coughs> to Article 3. And next, I will see if anybody will. Um, we are going to take a recess. So anybody move to take a recess for 15 minutes? Move to recess. Right, sure. <laughs> So people can go and vote, and we can so shut down the machine.
have to stay dedicated to the highway. And municipal can be used um, uh, either highway or municipal, although we keep it pretty well separated. The municipal budget, if there's a surplus or a deficit, it gets carried forward to the next year. The highway goes into a separate capital fund, which we have about $150,000 of capital funds in there now. And a, lot, a lot of that is due to not, not being able to get the gravel over the years. Um, we will be trucking it if we have to this summer because we really need really to get gravel on the roads. Uh, the 700 yards that are owed is just a small amount of gravel that we need for our roads, so. A tenth. A tenth. A tenth. Not gonna do it all in one year, buddy. Any other questions? Call the question. Call the question. Call the question. Yeah, move to vote. Second. Okay, um, all those in favor of um, uh, adopting uh, Article 4? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. I'd like to move Article 5. Great. Second. Okay, Article 5, shall the town of Granville vote to increase the highway capital investment fund in the amount of $6,000 for the purpose of repaving town roads? Anybody move to? How much? How, how much is in that capital investment fund currently? That, that will be $36,000 as of July 1st. Including this 6000 yes. The paving of the roads, the contract that we have is for about $130,000 to do the paving. What's that? Like one. Close to 140. 140. Okay. We did get four bids for that, which was amazing. That was the low bid. Pike Industries is going to be doing it, which the, the big uh, pavers in the state of Vermont sort of surprised that they bid on it, but they were also the low bidder. Um, they will get that done, and uh, uh, this article would, would just help us pay for the, uh, the paving. Um, the rest of the money that we need for paving will come out of um, ARPA money, the um, pandemic relief money, and our capital surplus in the highway department. Okay. And one more question. How, how much is left of the ARPA funds at this point in time? Right now, we have about $90,000 in ARPA funds. We bought <laughs> the computers for the office out of the ARPA funds. Um, I'm hoping that we can use some of that money for math for our handicap accessibility project. Um, but I, I think we have to have those ARPA funds committed this year. 
So if we, I don't know how fast this handicap accessibility granting is going to go, but um, if, if not, we'll, we'll use it um, either for, we can use it for other budget items, to offset budget items, or we can use it uh, to help, help us pave the roads. That's the point. But there won't be any impact on taxpayers. And is that by July 1, would you say? By Sarah? the end of the year, by December 31st. By December 31st. All right, thank you for that clarification. And those ARPA rules have changed all throughout. So, I mean, it's been a nightmare. It's nice the federal government gave this little town $90,000. Um, you know, they gave a lot more based on population. Um, and, uh, you know, that money was very tightly scrutinized when we first got it a couple of years ago that you could only do this or that with it. Now they've opened it up that you can offset budget items and, and other issues with the, with the federal money. But you got to use it by the end of this calendar year or you lose it. It goes back to the feds. Another question. Um, I had a question about the overall capital. Is that entirely for paving or is that also for grant? That the main part of what we've had to carry forward over the last couple of years is the gravel. That we we've been remiss on putting gravel down on our roads and doing we've been doing culvert work and we've been doing sections of roads, but our roads need, like Ken would say, how many thousand yards? About eight. Eight thousand yards, he says. Okay, so. So that part is for both the paving and gravel. Right. Right. Dedicated to roads. We, we did a calculation a few years ago to figure out how much gravel per year would, it would take to maintain the road onto a, a, a steady maintenance program, and that was about 3,200 yards for the amount of miles of roads that we have. And we've been going backwards for the last few years, so we need to get caught back up. Um, any, any other questions? Okay, I have a question. Yeah, so, make sure that. so this is my last ARPA question. And is it the purview of the select board to determine how those monies are used? Do you have to bring that to us at all? It's completely up to you. It's up to the select board. Is there a possibility that, that, that the, like, do we have to like read the agenda for the select board minutes in order for us to know when those are being allocated? Because it's a lot of money and there might be people in town who would be interested in how it's being done. We, we've had ARPA on our select board agenda every meeting. So, you know, we've been looking to, to for but different you projects. dispersed a lot of it, yeah. The only thing with it's been dispersed out of it is town computers. Yeah, we've been talking about it since summer about potentially using it for the ADA accessibility because it seems like that's something that at this point should should be here. Um, other bigger towns I know have formed like subcommittees with citizens and having it almost like in a grant style, like a simple formulated form. That's for hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know, you know, with the ninety thousand, but I. I well, I would. We have an overall budget of about four hundred thousand yeah. dollars, so that's about a quarter of our budget. It seems like it would be something that the town would want. Yeah, I would oh. love if people brought other. I mean, I know I'm stepping down, so I can't say much, but I think it would be great for people to chime in and like have backing at meetings of what they really want the the ARPA funds to go to. So it's not just three people deciding where that ninety thousand dollars. <coughs> yeah. Well, Does the ninety have to be? or just plan to be spent? Because I imagine forming a committee and voting on it may make it more difficult to have it. Yeah, I don't my, my understanding, the latest I've heard, is that it has to be committed in contracts yeah. by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. That we can't just say, well, we want to use it for handicap accessibility next year. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, there's, we've had it on our agenda every select board meeting, and we've talked about it every select board meeting. and. Uh, Anybody's got better ideas, by all means. There is still time. Okay. Any further discussion on Article 5? Any questions? Call the question and move the vote. Call the question. I'll second that. All right. Uh, Article 5 shall the town of Randall vote to increase the Highway Capital Investment Fund in the amount of $6,000 for the purpose of repaving town roads. All those in favor? Uh, Any opposed? All right, so move. Through the last year, you'll see that for a while. <laughs> I'd like to move Article 6. Move Article 6. 
Second. I'll second that. Uh, Article 6, shall the town of Granville vote to increase the municipal building investment fund in the amount of $5,000 for the purpose of repainting the municipal complex. It's hard to say. Municipal complex. <laughs> uh, any discussion on that? For questions? I'd like to move the question. Public question? Okay, uh, any second? Second. second. Okay. Uh, uh, Shall the town of Granville vote to increase the municipal building investment funding the amount of five thousand dollars for the purpose of repainting the municipal complex? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. That is passed. I'd like to move Article Seven. Article 7, shall the town of Granville vote to exempt the Corner School Resource Center from property taxes for five fiscal years beginning July 1st, 2024 and ending June 30th, 2029. Any discussion on that? I'd like to call the question. <laughs> Sounds good. Second. Second. Okay. Um, moving uh, to vote, shall the town of Granville vote to exempt the Corner School Resource Center from property taxes for five fiscal years? Beginning July 1, 2024, and ending June 30th, 2029. All of those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? All right. I'll move Article 8. Second. Great. Article 8 shall the town of Granville vote to authorize property taxes be paid to the treasurer as provided by law in four equal installments with due dates beginning August 15th, November 14th, February 13th, and May 15th. Any discussion on that? I'd like to just ask uh, just a question to to uh, maybe it's like what could they dates align a little bit more with the state and federal estimated taxes or is this kind of like I think those dates are set up so that the town clerk's office would be open. That, right? Right. Okay. So that the town clerk's so, office uh, would be open and it would be hopefully for a day. Right. Oh, that's right. <coughs> yeah, school right. payments. Yeah. <coughs> any any further discussion or questions on that? Anybody? I'll call the question. Okay. I'll second that. Great. Uh, Article 8, shall the town of Granville vote to authorize property taxes to be paid to the treasurer as provided by law in four equal installments with due dates beginning August 15th, November 14th, February 13th, and May 15th. Uh, Moving to, uh, to vote, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That was passed. Anybody? I'll move Article 9. Mm -hmm. Second. Great. Article 9. Shall the town of Granville vote that overdue taxes will bear interest at a rate of 1% per month or fraction thereof for the first three months? And thereafter, one and one half percent per month for a fraction thereof from the due date of such tax pursuant 32 Vermont Statute VSA uh, 5136. Uh, any discussion on that? That's right. Um, call the question. Any? I need to call the question. All right. Read that one more time. Shall the town of Granville vote that overdue taxes will bear interest at a rate of 1% per month or a fraction thereof for the first three months, and thereafter 1 and 1/2% 1 per month or a fraction thereof from the due date of such tax pursuant 32 VSA 5136? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That is passed. And I make a motion to bring in Article 10 to the board. I'll second it. All right, Article 10, to transact any other business to come before the meeting. Any other business that anybody would like to bring forward? Okay. I'm sorry, I feel like no. I was on a lot. I just want to, I want to notice, you know, it's wonderful to see lots of new, younger faces in town. That's the first thing I want to say. Um, but it's also a little sad to me to not see some of the older faces in town. And I, I, I was involved in why we moved this meeting to the time that it now is. But I begin to wonder if we're excluding a lot of the elders in our community who find it hard to come out at dark. Um, and I'm just wondering if that's something we might want to revisit for next town meeting, the, the time of day that we have it. 
I'm, I'm just I'm just putting that out there. I also miss uh, the days when we used to have uh, a real community supper around town meeting, and I, I just I just want to put that out there that it would be really great to really think of this as a community event, a community builder. Well, we had a supper when we had a school meeting. And all right, well, I'm all well aware. <laughs> <laughs> and Helen Shulman called me every year and told me to bring rolls. <laughs> how, how, do you, how do we decide? Do, uh, I, I, think, I think it can be decided when we post a warning next year, time and place. Right, so we I know we used to put it in the warning of the, uh, to have our town meeting next whenever. Exactly, we did use But I, I don't think that's required anymore. And if we put up that question now, will people have time who are here or to share that and maybe bring forth ideas over the next? We've talked about Saturday, we've talked, you know, during the day, but then people work, you know, so it's, there's no real good time. Yeah. It's a conundrum, but this is a small, I mean, yeah. this is I, small, this I, is small. I heard from people that um, stayed, weren't coming tonight because of the mud. Oh. The mud? Yeah, the mud. Oh, yeah. It's Ken's club. <laughs> I like my drive. <laughs> 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 oh, I just <laughs> oh, yes. uh, if, if I could go on with this theme that we're putting on, what about the idea of continuing it with the way we sort of have it? But then if you wanted to maybe try to leave it to say 5.30 or 6 o'clock, but what about if we can canvas some of the younger, more adept people in our community to provide transportation mm -hmm. to the older people that maybe don't want to be the ones driving and, and sort of become our own little ferrying service, if you will, to get some of the older people to come to you. If we start to say at 5.30, then we could do something like we did today is find a, a logical point where we could break and still have some kind of a potluck, um, you know, gathering that when you give it a time frame of how long it last, maybe half an hour or 45 minutes, it would still avail us of that, that socialization that mm -hmm. I think we're lacking in, and especially since COVID and all the things that have transpired in the last years. And then still manage to be out of here by a reasonable hour or say like 8 o'clock or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't have to do it. I just want to thank Cheryl and uh, Nancy for the snack. <coughs> yes. 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 I can't make it on a Saturday or, you know, very much of work with and seeing things at other times, but even being is good, you know, 6 o'clock was comfortable, but, you know, don't get out of work till 5 uh, up in the Manor Valley, so uh, I hate to see if it turned into a day meeting, I and mean, it's still only a two-hour meeting or three-hour meeting, depending on what's on the, on the docket, so it's yeah. just the... the when it's combined with voting, that would shut down some voting for some people that work during the day or on weekends, you know, just for fun. It's a conundrum. Yeah. I wanted to personally thank Roger and also for all the help in helping me prepare for this. I want to wish you a happy birthday. Oh. <laughs> March 27th in our usual place, the Hancock Firehouse from 5 to 7, so that's okay. always cats, whatever. But, and then uh, some of the town clerks, I'm not sure if Cheryl's there, I'm not for sure, but yeah. be able to register your dogs and clerks as well. So just be aware, it's the cheapest way to do it, no vet charges, just the shop charge. Do you want to and tick stuff too? Sure. Yeah. Dr. Haddon will be there. Yeah. Okay. Get all that stuff right. yes. and, and any other points of business that anybody would like to share before we adjourn? All right. Well, thank you all. Um, move to uh, yes. Yeah, I have a question. So there's, there's some discussion about like some like teenagers come in and vote on local town stuff. I don't know if we want to uh, um, maybe encourage that to get 
some younger younger people started. In Br town. Br Brattleboro had that for the first time this yeah. year. Yeah. Sixteen year olds. Sixteen year olds. Yeah. 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 From from local. Yeah. That's a great idea. I think that's going to be something we're going to look into for the next year. All right. All right. Uh, any, uh, does anybody move to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah.